Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Rineker, Justin Charles, John Nye, and Josh All. All right, let's get this thing going. Welcome back to a special live edition of the Dogs Podcast. Hopefully this lag clears itself out eventually. Today's episode, live episode, is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Uh, make sure you check them out. Use promo code DOGS. Get their big, juicy meat for your mouths. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's good stuff. You can use our promo code. You get uh, really good deals on there. Everybody seems to like it who's done it so far. So check out Omaha Steaks. It's a good deal for everybody. Um, so basically, we wanted to jump into this live here today. Um, should I do like an official open, Josh? Or... <laughs> Just just roll with it, man. Just do what you're doing. All right. You guys know how to find us. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't subscribed already, please do. Make sure you have the notification bell tapped so you don't miss any new content. A uh, new thing YouTube is rolling out right now is this YouTube, uh, what is it, member? Yeah. Is that where it's called, Josh? A YouTube membership. Mm-hmm. So uh, basically, we have ours right now set up. It's for the first one is 99 cents a month. Um, I don't like to beg you guys for money, but if you guys like the show and you want us to keep being able to like put out more content, maybe get new computers so we don't lag when we do live, (laughs) uh, uh, that kind of thing, Um, 99 cents a month, it might not sound like a lot, but if a bunch of you guys do 99 cents a month, uh, that helps support the show. You get some pretty cool emojis. I know Josh has one and... uh, Justin just signed up, so we got two right now, and it's both of us. So we're trying to get some more. I see Aaron Butler's in here. You did. I see Aaron Butler. My Aaron Butler. You knew he wasn't going to miss the live. It's good to have you guys. <laughs> it's good to have you here. Uh, so if if you guys are into that kind of thing, you want to help support the show, you like what we do. Uh, Ninety nine cents a month. Uh, there's a couple different pay scales. If you do, I think a four ninety nine a month one, you'll actually get access to the uh, after hours episodes. That's usually just for Patreon members. So uh, that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. If you want extra content, extra episodes, and that kind of thing. But base level ninety nine cents. If you guys can do that, it'd help the show a lot. Um, if you prefer to just listen to us, since we lag anyways on YouTube, you can find us on uh, Spotify, Apple, and Google. Um, and again, I just mentioned the dog pack, the Patreon. If you want more content, you want to hang out with a bunch of Browns fans from all over the world. You want access to a private Discord where it's just Browns talk twenty four seven. And it's not just Browns talk. We've all Everybody in this Patreon, I feel like we've become really good friends. So we talk about literally everything, comic books, movies, music. I mean, it literally covers everything and then obviously a ton of Browns content. So if that's something you're interested in, join the dogs.com, become an official dog pack member. I think we have some dog pack members in the chat. If anybody's curious, they'll tell you how much uh, they enjoy it. It's a lot of fun for everybody. So we wanted to do this live today so basically we just wanted to jump in and just kind of gauge how you guys the fans have felt about this browns off season so far the moves we've made so far and free agency trades hires fires and then what are you looking forward to upcoming in the draft um in terms of any more free agents you want to see the browns sign any more needs you think the browns have so we just wanted to get your interest and uh and and see what you guys have in your mind um why not just to get this thing started just to, until we can get some more people in here since we had more people and then it was getting you know we had the technical issues we'll see if everybody jumps back in um i just want to throw it out to you guys what the to start what would you grade the browns off seasons so far in terms of everything from coach hirings and firings to our most recent signings what would you grade this off season so far? All right, well, I'll go first. You're asking us right before the the chat catches up. Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm asking you guys. Yeah, I honestly, I know we we've talked about it, and you guys, I think it was a couple of weeks ago we did that episode, and you gave like a B plus or whatever. I'll just give it a. I'm going to give it like an A, A minus. I, I don't, I don't know what more the Browns honestly really could have done this off season to address the issues that we had with the cap space that we were able to clear and and utilize the coach hirings everything has been everything has just been so calculated it has fit the mold for what we need for this team so well now we got the draft coming up there's obviously more 
cap space to be cleared you know whenever we get clowny and um uh jj3 off the off the books and everything like that which I, that, they still got to come off the books right yes i think it says june, june right june so so you know there's more more guys to be signed over the summer we've got you know the rookies coming in whoever we we pull in the draft and using 42 to get elijah moore just i feel like that was that was the ticket right there yeah i, I completely agree what about you jess will agree to give an s right now so I'd like to just stay where I'm at. Like I'm like at a B, B plus, And just, this is my only reasons. I like everything that we're doing. I love it. To me, it all makes sense. But I've seen this before in Brown's off seasons where I think, man, this is a whole run. This is a great, whatever it is, acquisition, uh, draft pick. And then it just never translates or it's a bus. And so for me, I just want to just stay level-headed for once in my life. And I'm all of you. You guys know me. I'm always the guy that's, oh, hey, don't worry. We're going to be great. We're going to go undefeated. Always the super optimist. I just want it for once in my life just to be level headed about it. And I want to see if this actually transitions into success. Because to me, it looks like I love what we did. To me, where I saw weaknesses, we addressed them. Um, I, I love I love the Elijah Moore. I, I, there's, there's many things that we've done. I just, I need to see it happen now before i uh before i get to you john i do want to shout out jonathan stan and fatal gnome here on youtube becoming our first non-host youtube members uh, <laughs> here on youtube you guys have popped our cherries we really appreciate that you guys joining um it means the world to us really guys for real like you guys doing this kind of stuff and supporting us it it's it just awesome. It makes it, it makes doing the show worth it. So we appreciate you guys doing that. And the emojis that Josh put up here for the members, they're pretty sweet. You some pretty cool uh, uh, Browns ones. Well, so, what's cool with the emojis uh, is the more people that sub or that actually join our membership on the channel, it it unlocks more emojis. So I can add more and more the more people who sign up. Yep. Uh, also, if you're on a if you're on like an Apple device. Apparently, the join now button isn't as readily available because of some issues. I don't know if it's on YouTube's end or what, um, but if you need the link because you can't join through your YouTube app, just let us know. We can drop the link for you in the chat. Um, Josh might be able to just do that. I, I did already. Let me see. Can I, I can okay. pin that. Yeah, I'll pin it to the top. Okay, cool. Yep. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and move on. Then. John, what do you think? What do you grade this uh, offseason so far for the Browns? So... I'm with Justin on this. I would. We definitely had a good offseason. We've had a good free agency, so I wouldn't do anything crazy and say like D or C. That would be crazy. But uh, I'll say B. I think we've had a B. Um, and Justin brought this up too. Um, I mean, remember when we got John Johnson the third? Yes. <laughs> and everybody said he was the best, uh, the best safety in free agency. And I was super excited about that. And he was good, not great as a Cleveland Brown, you know. Definitely didn't live up to expectations. So you always just have to wait and see. Uh, I'm going to say a B, though. Uh, but, you know, I can't I can't really say an A, you know, with everything we've done so far. So I'll say a B. So I'm going to say an A because I'm not going to let our past – failures dictate the way this is going and um i also i think i can grade the offseason moves on paper differently than grading them six months from now you know once the season has started right now on paper i don't see any reason why this isn't an a and i'll tell you one something that makes me think this is an a offseason in terms of coach hirings and players added you have people like Aaron Butler, you know, a notorious Browns hater who's watching right now, always trashes our roster. And even he's had nice things to say about the guys we've added to this roster. And if you can get him to say that's actually a good, smart signing, you you know you did something uh, smart because that guy's not giving out compliments to the Browns ever. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so if you can get him to say that the Browns added some nice pieces, the Browns added some nice pieces. Um, 
I, I think we have addressed almost every position of need. I know I, I saw a comment on here. Impulse says uh, he thinks one more D tackle would be ideal, uh, but specifically Ashawn Robinson would be a fantastic ad, ad. Outside of Tomlinson, I still don't trust our interior D line to disrupt the run. I agree. I agree. Again, we addressed the fact that we'll have more money uh, come June 1st, and we still have the draft. I think D tackle in the draft is still de- um, for sure very much in play because I agree. Outside of Tomlinson, Winfrey showed flashes last year, especially in the in the pass game. But I don't know if we have another run stuffing D tackle outside of Tom uh, Tomlinson. So I completely agree with that point. I would I wouldn't mind seeing that. Um, Fatal Gnome said too that the Browns are set to meet with Al Woods DT from Seattle, which I just pulled up the article. I'm not sure when that meeting's set for, but he's another name that's been floated around. Uh, so another thing I wanted to throw up to you guys then is. What's been your favorite move of this offseason? We'll just kind of go right down the line again. Uh, everything's fair game. Hirings, firings. What, Josh, what's your favorite move been so far? I mean, for as bad as the defense was last year, my favorite move so far has to be Jim Schwartz coming in because we have been we were crying for three straight seasons with Joe Woods. Please just get him out of here. He's He doesn't know how to use these guys, whatever. He's not communicating effectively. They're quitting on the field. They obviously don't believe in whatever he's doing, so... Why are we continuing to roll out the same garbage every week, every year? So we finally got rid of him. We bring in Jim Schwartz, a proven leader. I'm excited to see what he can do. I think we've got some great guys on this roster that can really execute what he wants to do. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Spring is in the air, and that can only mean one thing, spring grilling. The steak experts at Omaha Steaks have made it easy to spring into something delicious with their semi-annual sale. With 50% off site-wide, grab all your favorites like perfectly aged, tender steaks, ocean fresh seafood, juicy burgers, incredible air chilled chicken, and decadent desserts. Plus, when you go to omahasteaks.com and use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S at checkout, you'll get an extra $30 off your order. It's the perfect way to get fired up and spring into something special. Don't wait. Go to omahasteaks.com dot com use code dogs at checkout take advantage of this deal right now omaha steaks is ready to ship your order right away and you're going to want to hurry because 50 percent off site wide is only happening for a limited time so don't miss your chance to say big right now visit omahasteaks.com use code dogs d-a-w-g-s at checkout get that additional 30 dollars off when you shop their semi-annual sale today minimum order may be required what about uh what about you justin what's been your favorite pickup so far I like that, Josh. I really, really like uh, Juan Thornhill a lot. I like his game a lot. Everything, all the tape that I've seen, I like everything. But I really, really, Dalvin Thompson's kind of growing on me. I've watched a lot of his stuff, and uh, I'm a big nerd. I don't know if anybody knows that. But uh, his big thing he likes to do is uh, he wears the Infinity Gauntlet, and uh, he like every time he gets a sack or he makes a play, he adds uh, you know a Power Stone to his glove. <laughs> and so to me i'm like i'm excited to see that but like to me he's uh he's a big guy and we've needed a disruptor our our line for a long time has just been i think it's soft to say it was just soft like we were just undisciplined we couldn't get to the running back for anything they would get five yards before even there was even maybe an attempt at contact so I really like both those. I'm excited about the defense. I don't think we're done, though. I wouldn't be surprised if there was one more or two more big splashes and even draft night. It wouldn't surprise me if we made some moves. You see teams go and do big things on draft night and go get a big, big player. I I know that we we might not be able to do that financially, but I'd like to see that happen. What about you, John? What, what are you, What's your favorite uh, addition or deletion? Yeah, Josh kind of took my idea. Jim Schwartz, without a doubt. Uh, well, and firing Joe Woods, you know, that kind of not the same thing, right? But yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, firing uh, firing Joe Woods might be my actual favorite thing we did this off season. But yeah, J- um, I'm so excited about Jim Schwartz. I'm I'm stoked. I'm I'm still high from that, you know. So I'm just. I can't wait to see how our defense looks. I think we picked up some really good pieces as far as players go, but for me, the best move we've made yet is getting rid of Joe Woods and bringing in a competent defensive coordinator. I'd have to say uh, my favorite move so far, 
I, obviously, like getting the D tackle, Tomlinson was was huge. I was, and that to me, that was the, t- the team's biggest need. But the one I'm really excited to watch is I've been getting Elijah Moore is yeah. kind of a steal. Yeah. Um, it, to, to pair him with a Deshaun Watson, you know, and now you're, we have two of the best route runners in the NFL uh, in our wide receiving core to match him with uh, David Njoku, who showed a lot of promise. You know, I feel like he took a step last year and then a running game with Nick Chubb. Like, I don't know. I think, I think Elijah Moore has a chance to feast with Deshaun Watson. So that I'm really, really excited for that. And then re-signing Posick was huge. I I don't think you can be undersold how important that was for the team. I agree totally. I, I I was torn between Jim Schwartz and Elijah Moore just because that, that last weapon on offense that we were just, we're like, well, are they going to draft somebody? How, who are they going to get in here? We need one other piece to really blow the top off this thing. And I think he's the guy. I think you, I think you, uh, you and Josh, uh, Josh and John touched on something big too. Is we've had nice players, and they've looked completely lost in the sauce. Like they don't know what the hell they're doing. So to get a leader and a voice, and he's kind of a nasty guy. Like you know, from what you hear, he's kind of gritty. We we need that. We need a guy that's kind of gritty. Kind of we need a Greg Williams type character in the locker room. No, I, I like that. So just for fun, uh, because Aaron is in here and yes. we're, I know this, what Aaron, I, I want to ask you, what grade do you give the Ravens off season so far? Because <laughs> their division, I know this is a Browns uh, podcast here, but and you guys in the chat too, do they give Fs? <laughs> I'm not trying to talk smack in terms of like how it's going to go on the field this year, but if we're just comparing uh, off season moves to off season moves, Man, has any team had kind of a worse offseason than Baltimore? And to fill the void while he's waiting for this 30-second uh, delay or whatever it is, me and him ran a bet last year, and it fell through on who could sweep who. Um, so I'm willing to run that back with you, Aaron, just so you know. Browns sweep AFC North. You got to do an intro for the show, and you got to be very nice. And all that, all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Got to talk about how awesome we are, how awesome the Browns are. If the Ravens sweep the division, you know, I'll wear whatever you, you send me Lamar the Greats jersey uh, for a day or two. I'll wear that on the podcast and people can talk about how I'm an awful human being. I'm that. Why would he, why would he send you a Lamar jersey when he's going to be in Miami? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he can send you a. T- he can send you a Tyler Huntley jersey. I'd be cool, uh, J.K. Dobbins. Uh, you know, hey, I'll wear J.K. Dobbins, Ohio State, uh, great running back. But no, I just uh, I'm willing to run that back with you. And that was very uh, that was very fun last year. So, uh, no, I, I just wanted to mess with the Ravens a little bit. I just I, I don't know. For the first time in a long, long time, it almost seems like they don't have the plan. Like they were caught off guard by the cute quarterback situation. I mean, I know Aaron's holding out a lot of hope that Lamar's just playing hardball and he's gonna be back at, that does not it does not look like that. It doesn't everything like that. No, like everything from what I am seeing and just reading and hearing, it's both sides are pretty much ready to be done with each other. So I you lose your quarterback in the offseason and your big ad is Nelson Aguilar, that's not a good offseason. That's not a good offseason at all. And for a guy that I've spent my entire life waiting for my franchise to hit on a quarterback and they may be going into that darkness, like where it's just depression every year, like, is this the guy? Could this be the one? I, I like it. I like it as a Browns fan, but I'm just saying... It's it's very awful. It's been yeah, it's consistent. something something tells me the Ravens are never going to draft the second coming of Brandon Whedon. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they draft if if they sign and trade Lamar to the Colts and then they draft Will Levis. I could I don't know. I've been on the record saying I think Will Levis is going to cost somebody their job. I remember that he's got a big arm. But I've seen Big Max not do well. Yeah. I love all the videos of Lamar in shorts and a t-shirt. 
Uh, I'm like, well, everybody can throw the ball far. Who's going to be a quarterback in the NFL? Zach Wilson. I mean, Zach Zach Wilson got drafted too because of one throw at his pro day and a cutoff in basketball short. Is I don't know. Sometimes they just overthink it. Go look at his actual production. Hey, shout oh, out to yeah. Mel- hey, shout out. out to Milky Love Drops. Another YouTube supporter. Appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate the support. All right, keep going, John. Uh, yeah, Cardale Jones. You remember how far Cardale Jones could throw a football? Yeah. Not exactly succeeding in the NFL as a first string quarterback. One thing I've heard about Will Levis too is that he has not done much testing at all here in this offseason leading up to the draft, and people are kind of wondering why. I and I saw an article that said he's not doing well like in the interview process. I saw that too. With teams. Yep. Um, so, and he's, I saw things like posting shirtless pics on the, like, yeah. he's all jacked and ripped. And most of the time your quarterback, I mean, who's like extra jacked, it, it, you need him to be like, be able to move, you know? So yeah. I don't know. He just, I think that guy's thinking somebody fired. Somebody's going to reach, take him in the top five. And in three years that coach and GM. Okay. Well, if we're going down this route then, and you think Will Levis being taken in the top five might get somebody fired. What do you think about Anthony Richardson? So that to me that he is like the he's like the Lamar of this draft, only not nearly as accomplished in college. I mean Lamar was a Heisman Trophy winner, right? Um, but he's this guy that maybe if you if you get him, there's a chance he could like take the league by storm with his athleticism and stuff, or there's a chance he's going to be a complete bust. I don't know. I think he's very high risk and very high reward. Yeah, he's freakishly athletic. Like all of his metrics, as far as like at the combine, were off the charts. Yeah, but and I guess if you're if you're gonna take a guy and it's gonna be a project, and you can and like kind of like how Baltimore they build a system around Lamar, if they can do something similar, I don't think that he it's a automatic that he can't be successful. But I've seen quarterbacks, I and I'm guilty of this. I took Malik Willis last year in a dynasty draft because everybody said athletic can do things that other quarterbacks can in this draft. And then I started him a couple of times every time he popped up and it was bad, like (laughs) 0.7 points for the entire game bad. So it doesn't always translate. Here's the thing is athleticism and all that stuff is nice for quarterback. But to me, like the, the number one most important thing for quarterback is how quickly can you process information? Can you can you take what you're seeing pre-snap? Get the ball. They were disguising the coverage, and they have now dropped into something different. Can you now adjust to that? Make your read and deliver an accurate ball in two and a half seconds. That's all. That's all information processing. If you can't, it doesn't matter how athletic you are. It doesn't matter how good of an arm you have. If you can't do that, you're not going to be successful in the NFL. And a lot of that is well, some of that's just like natural you know like you just you have photographic memory you see like Aaron Rodgers and stuff can remember plays from six years ago uh but then it's also you gotta it's preparation you know yeah. there's a reason why Tom Brady spent 40 hours a week watching film so it I mean look how unathletic he is <laughs> and he played till he's 45 years old so if you can't process information quickly I, I don't care how athletic you are you're probably not going to be successful quarterback in the NFL so we've got a, see, oh, go ahead, Justin. Oh, go ahead. Nope, you go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I say we just got some people in the chat kind of talking about trading up in the draft. Do we see that, okay. you know, do we see that happening? I, I'll just say real quick, I've, I've been saying this in the last few episodes. I do think that we will because we're, I don't see us using all eight of these picks. I don't know who those roster spots go to. I think if a guy starts to fall down in the second round, I, I think you could see the Browns try to, Get up, maybe mid. What do you guys think? Maybe mid second round to, to grab a guy. Maybe Wait, look, guy. Yeah. Maybe. Tell me this too. What? There's 52 spots. There are 53 spots on a roster. How many open roster spots are there right now in the Browns? Oh, I bet maybe, maybe, maybe five. Yeah. You and know that, what I mean? Like, there's there's not a lot of room for rookies, and it's, there's definitely not a lot of room for late round rookies. You know, like. This isn't this isn't the Browns of 2016 where we're drafting guys in the fifth round who were like, "Ugh, Muhammad Massaqua is going to be our number one this year. He's going to take <laughs> right. us to the promised land." You know what I mean, like, like we talked about this uh, a few weeks ago, 
we had a hard time coming up with a rookie category for the the Mad Dog Awards this year because rookies didn't have a huge impact for the Browns this year outside of Emerson. Um, and it's going to just be more of the same. I think if we, if we draft a defensive tackle or maybe – I don't even know if a receiver is going to come in and make immediate impact now with the signing or with the trade for Elijah Moore. Like you got Cooper, you got Elijah Moore, you have uh, DPJ, you have Njoku. There's not a ton of room in the receiver room either. There's depth pieces, but nobody, I don't think anybody we draft is going to come in and be like a 75 catch guy unless we pull off something crazy. But these people who are members with their uh, the level one and stuff next to their, it's pretty sweet. Yeah, I like I, that. Yeah. Hey, Musk, you got to get on board with the level one. Can we get that from Aaron Butler tonight? <laughs> Hello, Nicholas. <laughs> what we're talking about here, oh, in terms of roster spots available for the Browns. Um, yeah, I just don't think there's many roster spots available. So I think it would be smart to try to package some picks together and move up and get some higher value guys just because there's not a lot of room on this team for fifth, sixth, and seventh round guys. That's just the way it is. No, not at all. And I do think we do need to get a little bit of depth in some key places, but we can trade up to get, you know, maybe a better value at, at some of that depth and get some rotational pieces. What do you guys think? How many how many roster spots are available on the Browns? I said there's maybe five or six spots available. What do you guys think in the chat? Yeah, there's, so, there's not many. Um, what do you think is the Brown still the Browns' biggest need? I'd say another interior defensive lineman, um, for sure. Um, I was looking. I I talked to you guys about this last time. I thought that I could see us maybe taking a flyer as far as draft pick on safety, just because if we have an injury, as much as I'd love to see the Anthony Bell right now, it's and I don't have the depth chart pulled up, but it was the it was literally Thornhill, Delpit, which I think those two work really well together. And you had the Anthony Bell and a guy I've never heard of. And that was it. And I know we have practice squad guys that we can bring up and stuff like that, but we're literally an an injury or two away from just maybe being worse than we were last year at the safety position. And so a lot of a lot of people are saying linebacker. Do you yeah. think do you think do you think linebacker will be helped by the fact that we've bolstered the defensive line? Yes, yeah, yeah. Sure. And now guys aren't just gonna be running free on our linebackers. You know, we have guys who can actually eat up some blocks. So then in that th- is linebacker as big a need as we think because we bolstered the D line? Or do you think we can go into the season with Taki Taki will probably be ready, what, maybe seven weeks in? I, I guess it depends on how his rehab's going. Um, but then you got, you know, Jay, okay. We re signed Walker again. Uh, is Raglan back? I don't believe so. Okay. So that, um, but so what do you think? Is linebacker as big a need as we think it is? Or do we think the improved defensive line play is going to help there? I mean, I think the defensive line is going to help out a lot. As far as our biggest need, I still want to see one guy that can stop the run, whether it's a defensive tackle or a linebacker. I just want somebody who can stop the run. Um, Because I'm not, we were so bad at it last year that did, I mean, losing Clowney and getting uh, Boblinson, you know, are we still going to have an issue with that? Well, they're two completely different positions. We should be all right. And you can't forget we added... Yeah, but I, the reason I brought it up is just because Clowney's kind of known for more of that run stop. So, we were so bad against the run, though, last year. Uh, before we keep going, I just, again, for the people who are new to the chat, remember, uh, if you're new to YouTube, uh, you can join us for 99 cents a month, become a member. Right now, while John's on the screen, we need this 99 cents. This, this guy needs a trim. I don't stop. <laughs> please, please, John, <laughs> please get us. To, uh, he looks like he looks like Bully McGuire. He looks like evil Peter Parker. Oh, we, need, not. <laughs> we need your 99 cents. Let's get this man into great clips. We'll, we'll do a live on an episode. I am so sorry. I'm letting the team down. <laughs> Going great. Going great. 
Oh, oh man, so, I'm just to with touch you. on your what you were huh. saying too. Literally. As a, also, I think that we were trying to get very fast sideline to sideline linebackers, and then like so now like what's what do, is that does that identity still fit what Jim Schwartz is trying to do? Because to me, Jacob Phillips, very I don't know what we have there. You know what I mean? I don't I I really don't remember him being on the field a lot. And if he was, I wasn't impressed with what I saw. I mean, JOK is nice, but like are we trying to be bruisers? Are we trying to be fast? And after that, there's not a lot of depth. You know what I mean? Especially if these guys I don't know what Walker and Taki Taki's as far as recovery is going to go like. But I mean, if we have to roll out there with, let's say, JOK, Jacob Phillips, and Tony Fields. I mean, I like Tony Fields as like a depth piece, but like, man, that's pretty, that's pretty rough. I First of all, shout out to Impulse for becoming a YouTube member. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, I feel like our linebacker core was built thinking we got to stop Lamar Jackson. But right. now yeah. Lamar chances are he's not even going to be in the division. Also with the new, the new defensive coordinator, Jim Schwartz, he, he plays that wide nine technique. Right. That's going to force, that's going to force everything up the middle. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to let people get outside of us on, you know, on the run. So if we're forcing everything to the middle, we can't be weak there. Because yeah. we're going to be forcing them to the weakness of our defense if that's the case. So um, I think we need some some beefier linebackers. I, I like JLK a lot, but so if you get a body on him, he, he's got to basically be a magician to not be blocked. Though he's like duck dive, it's like he's in dodgeball uh, <laughs> to get around to get around a block. So we need a little bit. We need some some heavier linebackers. I think you saw last year when some of our starters got hurt and we're bringing in these no-name guys that we'd never even heard of, the right. defense actually started to play better. I think just yeah. because they were, he they were heavier. Yeah. They, they could, they could, they weren't getting pushed around. They were, they were at least just filling holes, even with, if they weren't as good. So I think we need a little bit of beef in the linebacker room. Yeah. Gage says fields is more of a special teams guy. Yeah. We completely agree. That's why yeah. I sucked to have to rely on him to be a, a starter. Yeah. Did, uh, I know this is going to take it a little off track for just a second, but I just wanted to get you guys' opinion on this. Did you guys see that Tyreek Hill wanted to come to Cleveland? I don't know if he was – did he actually want to come to Cleveland or was he just he, saying that because the guy's a brown shirt? Yeah, I know. I, but it's it's worth looking into because this was – I believe it was like that all happened pre-Deshaun Watson. So, you know, obviously you can't trade a first, a second, three firsts and have Deshaun Watson and Tyreek Hill and somehow still have any money at all. But uh, I love the idea that that's a guy, I mean, a superstar, and he was willing to come to Cleveland and play. But he was just like, they didn't want to pay me. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I get it, man. And we didn't want to give up my draft picks either. Well, we got him. We got him. And, and if it was before before the, the Deshaun stuff, what we would have traded all that away to bring him in a guy so Baker Mayfield could throw him the ball. <laughs> like, right, right. You know what I mean? Like that right. just that that would have been ignorant. Yeah. Uh I thought oh, it was really well. I love the I I thought even if it was just uh an appeal thing, I was like, man, that would be the the fact that Cleveland was getting some love on there from Tyree Kill, I was like, very cool. Unrendered said he was trolling. I tend to agree, but <laughs> but we'll see. I just I want to believe that he was legit on it. No, I do think people the the media and stuff can say whatever they want about Deshaun, but I think players want to play with Deshaun. Absolutely, and I think bringing in a guy with the credibility of Jim Schwartz, people like to people will play for Jim Schwartz. I think Browns fans, ignorant Browns fans, might not be super high on Stefanski, but I think players respect his play calling and intelligence level. I mean, he's given a guy like Kirk Cousins. I mean, Kirk Cousins played really well for Stefanski. Baker had his best years of pro under Stefanski. Like, Go Browns back. fans might not like him, you know what I mean? But Stefanski has – he's looked at highly around the league. So, I think the, the – and Andrew Barry, I think he's very much considered, like, one of the best young GMs. So, I think the way that the league – players around the league look at the Browns is way different than it was even five, six years ago. It, well, how many times was it – I mean, I felt like for weeks on end, we were right there in games. 
It was it literally came down to one play or one call or one shitty kick. So for me, I'm like, we're right there. I feel like we're very close. And to me, it looks like we've upgraded. And I know that we've upgraded. I feel great about how we've upgraded on defense as far as philosophy and leadership. And I think that goes a long way. And I hope that like now you have two two leaders and then Schwartz just takes the defense. I hope that Stefanski doesn't even have to even deal with that. I, I That will be Jim Schwartz's deal. He's got that. Kevin worries about the offense. And you see, I think Paula, I think he's going to be a great, great special teams coach. And I think he's got a very bright future. Like long term, I could see him. I don't know if he's head coach ready right now, but just what you've read about it, I think his future is very, very bright. He's very, very touted. No, I completely agree. Uh, Unrendered wants to know how we're feeling about Marquise Goodwin, the signing of Marquise Goodwin. I think he's like that. No, he it. Yeah. I think he's a burner. I think uh, he's a pro. He's a vet. He, he knows what it takes to be successful in the league. He's he's like the veteran, better version of, a, of an Anthony Schwartz. Who I so, think now is not going to make the team. No, I... I think Schwartz is a long shot to make the team. Um, do you think Felton makes this team? No. No. The only th- how many running backs do we have? So we got Chubb, um, and we got Ford, and that's it. Yep. And Felton. So Felton might make the team just because we don't have a third running back. The the draft Unless we'll draft one. The draft's gonna be really telling. Um I forget who I was talking to today, and they were talking about Devon A Chain um from AM. And, you know, that's a guy Brian brought up. Blake, I know you weren't there yet for that discussion with Brian, but, you know, he's a smaller back. He's the guy that we talked about being maybe that third down pass receiving back. But, you know, the more I've watched on him too, like he really did handle between the tackles pretty well. So he could be a sneaky ad for the Browns as kind of like a a lightning to Nick Chubb's thunder if we wanted to go that direction. I think um, think Ford could surprise some people this year with, yeah. With touches, I always like to touches forward. out of the backfield. Yep. So, um, well, we're coming up on the seven o'clock hour. Our stream quality shit, anyways. <laughs> uh, so, I think we're gonna wrap this thing up. To everybody who stuck around with us uh, through the the quality issues, um, taking even a, a thirty second break in the middle to try to get it going, we really appreciate you guys being here. Um, we appreciate everybody who became a YouTube member. I saw Andrew Jackson said, uh, worked late and he's been driving. Glad he got to watch. You can make it up to us by pledging your 99 cents. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just giving him a hard time. We, everybody in the chat, give a round of applause to Andrew Jackson. He is the longest standing member of the dog pack. He's yep. been in the dog pack basically since it originated. He's been with us now for, uh, going on what three years? Yeah, almost three years. Started that up. Yep. So uh, everybody, give him a round of applause. And Gage Tucker's in here too, and he's been there since pretty much the beginning, also. So, like I said, if if you guys are interested in that, I mean, I, we talk to these guys literally every, every day. day now, every yeah. day. So if if you if you like us, you think we're cool, you know, you want to uh, hang out, you know, or if you just want to, you know, pick our brains, even when we're not on an episode. Um, if you guys, if you guys want to be a part of that community, again, I mean, Gage is from Texas, Andrew's from Kentucky. We got people in San Diego, and we all talk every day. So it's it's just a really cool thing. It's it's something. It's probably the coolest part of starting the podcast yeah. is starting that that dog pack and getting to know where we're like fifty some people from all over the world. We got guys in Scotland that we talk to every day. So it's just. It's super cool. So if you're into that kind of thing, join the dogs.com. You can become an official dog pack member on top of just getting to meet all these people. You get extra content. You get to have your voices heard more often. The after hours episodes, literally what you guys want to talk about every single week. So it's just a good time for everybody. I think if you ask any of those guys, they'll tell you that, that it's pretty awesome. So, uh, we appreciate you guys being here. We appreciate everybody who became a, uh, a YouTube member. We're, you know, a couple dollars away from being able to get John a haircut. I know he appreciates that. Uh, so we appreciate you guys all being here and uh, sticking with, with us through technical difficulties. And we will see you guys next week. Love you guys. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at the Dogs Podcast.
Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.